I'm joined live by Pulitzer Prize winning journalist Karen Hunter. Karen's also a publisher and teaches journalism at Hunter College. And live from D.C., Amanda Carpenter is a reporter and blogger for the Washington Times. And a good morning to the two of you, ladies. Good morning, good morning. again. I don't think it's about health care, really, that this discussion is, is really hinged on. So, hmm. Well, let, let me address that because there's this whole underlying theme. You hear it everywhere that if you somehow oppose the president's bill or you bring up something over whether it would address uh, illegal aliens, that maybe you're a racist. And I think that might be what you're getting to in that mm -hmm. last comment. Uh, Maureen Dowd brought it up in the New York Times column. And I think that's dangerous to say that when people dissent from the president in this whole post-racial era, era mm. that you're somehow racist. Well, we're supposed well, to be well, You can we're dissent, not in a we're not be... Can, can, I, can I, I want to jump mm -hmm. in here because it's sort, of, it's sort of relative because there's a new article on political care and it suggests the president isn't as capable as his predecessors of inspiring fear in those who oppose him. Here's what Ben Smith writes, this on the health reform debate. Obama is almost going, certainly going to be pressuring liberals in his own party to accept less than they once expected and conservative Democrats to spend more than they want. When this moment comes, Obama will likely find the power of reason is more effective when backed by a demonstrating willingness to crack heads. <laughs> what the president's style, does that betray him in this debate? What, his uh, reasonable, very eloquent style? Which style? Are we, what are we talking about? And I, and I do want to kind of hit it, it at what Amanda said. It is racism, and the last thing somebody wants to be called is a racist, and I understand that. But I've never seen in my history, and I haven't been here that long, but you know, I did a little research, people yelling out in, in Congress, twi twittering on their BlackBerry. There's a, a level of disrespect. The man has been in office for nine months. He inherited a record deficit. Um, by the way, the last president uh, amassed quite a deficit. He was handed over a surplus, yet there were no marches during the eight years that he squandered our money and took us into an illegal war. So I, I just find it interesting that the same leeway isn't given to him. He's been in office nine months to kind of do the job that he said he would do. And all of this opposition right. does seem a little weird. Okay, I'm going to have to give the last word to you, Amanda, in all fairness. Yeah, sure. I, I think that's an incredible double standard that was just laid out. Uh, we had lots of dissent and healthy opposition to President Bush when he was in office. And people booed and hissed during his State of the Union addresses. Nobody called them racist. And when people dissent from the president, the first move, because he's black in this post-racial era, should not be to levy that charge at those people. Okay, guys, that's going to be the last word for this go-round. There will be more, I promise. Amanda Carpenter and Karen Hunter, thank you, ladies. Thank you. Thank